This is your WMDX Daily News Roundup for Mad Radio 92.7 FM and 1580 AM in Madison. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Wisconsin's leading business group is asking the Wisconsin Supreme Court to overturn Governor Evers' line-item veto last summer to let school districts increase spending for each of the next 400 years. Lawyers for Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce argue Evers' maneuver forces local property taxpayers to pay more for schools without having any say. PFAS pollution could be an issue in this year's elections. Marquette University political scientist Amber Wachowski tells Wisconsin Eye that people who read more news are likely to be the most concerned. One of the predictors of your concern over PFAS is, are you paying attention to current affairs and political issues? Republican lawmakers and Governor Evers can't agree if the Department of Natural Resources or local communities should administer PFAS cleanup. David Casey is Wisconsin's new acting revenue secretary. Casey will take over for Peter Barca in two weeks. Barca retired earlier this month. Casey has more than 30 years' experience working with state tax agencies. He recently served as deputy revenue secretary. He's been working as an expert in tax compliance and fraud for SAS Institute in North Carolina. Donald Trump's Wisconsin campaign director in 2020 will lead the state Republican Party this election year. Andrew Iverson will serve as executive director of the Republican Party of Wisconsin. He takes over for Mark Jefferson, who left in February to lead the Wisconsin Tavern League. In 2020, Iverson pushed unfounded allegations of widespread voter fraud. 25 states cap out-of-pocket costs for insulin, but not Wisconsin. The high cost of the actual drug combined with the high cost of supplies has really made this crisis something that definitely kills people. Catherine Poe is a policy researcher. A bill in the Wisconsin legislature would cap insulin co-pays at $35 a month for workers on commercial health insurance. Two scenic highways in Wisconsin are now part of the state's Rustic Roads program. The first stretch covers almost 10 miles near the American Berkebiner Trail in northwest Wisconsin. The other new route crosses Honey Creek near East Troy and passes what was once a one-room schoolhouse. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. This is news from WMDX Madison. Reckless driving and high-speed chases appear to be getting more common. Monona police say they chased three different drivers at high speeds in a span of less than 12 hours Sunday and Monday. Two of the chases were eventually called off. The third ended when the driver was arrested on the interstate. Police were able to identify the owners of the two other vehicles, and at last word were looking to arrest the people who were driving them. Two longtime family-owned Madison supermarkets are now sold to a Michigan company. Not much is supposed to change as far as most people are concerned. The store's branding will stay the same and everyone's keeping their jobs. Metcalf's Market traces its beginnings to a store in Butler in 1917. The Metcalf name came in 1937. Since 2000, Metcalf's has been owned by the founder's great-grandsons, Kevin and Tim Metcalf. Dane County's Centro Hispano is getting national recognition. The National Hispanic Federation is awarding Centro Hispano its annual Community Service Award, which honors organizations that serve Latinos in their communities. Centro Hispano is the leading nonprofit serving Dane County's Latino community. The organization says it's tripled the size of its staff and doubled its programs. UW-Madison police officers can pull you over for a burned-out headlight or a broken turn signal, but now, instead of a ticket, UW police are giving out vouchers for free repairs. It's part of a partnership with a nationwide program called Lights On, and it's the first such partnership in Wisconsin. The vouchers are good at local auto repair shops. 163 law enforcement agencies in 21 states are Lights On partners. By one estimate, UPS has accidentally told about a 1,000 people in the area their packages were delivered to Exact Sciences on Madison's west side. The State Journal reports some UPS packages got an incorrect delivery scan Saturday that led to some people in the Madison area being told their packages were delivered to Exact Sciences. Packages were actually set to be delivered to their intended destinations, but not after some confusion. A University of Wisconsin student has started her own nonprofit to help sexual assault survivors. Jess Randall holds a clothing drive every year for survivors who leave their clothes in the emergency room to be taken in as evidence. 
Randall says she's a survivor herself. She says the goal of her survivor clothing project is to spread awareness. There's a 5K walk run Sunday. It costs $5 to sign up and all the money will go to Randall's charity. And that's what you need to know. This is WMDX News. The Brewers bow to the Padres. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports. Milwaukee had a 3-1 to lead over San Diego. Then came an ugly fifth inning. The Padres hitting half a dozen singles. Driving in six runs. They went on to win 7-3 at American Family Field. Brewers catcher William Contreras let a Joe Ross pitch get past him. Manager Pat Murphy. Yeah, I mean, it, it happens. You know, um, William's been so good and the ball was not exactly a strike, but... I think the ball got away from Joe and kind of takes off, you know, took off when a guy's throwing 95 miles an hour sometimes and slider backs up or doesn't do what you think it's doing. There's a lapse there for a second, but William catches that ball most of the time. He's, you know, it could happen to any catcher on that pitch in the game. The series continues tonight. NFL Packers players reporting to Green Bay for a week of meetings and physicals. NBA, the Bucks are 1-4 and four so far this season against the Pacers. The good news is head coach Doc Rivers has until Sunday to prepare. Yeah, we get to practice. Yeah, and, and Indiana has, has had our number all year, right? So, perfect opponent. You know, listen, we got to play somebody, and they're they're tough. They've played great against us. They have probably great confidence against us. Um, we'll have great focus because we're going to have to. That's Bucks head coach Doc Rivers. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. In addition to rock star, Alex Van Halen is adding author to his resume. The famous brother of an even more famous brother, Eddie Van Halen, has written a book chronicling the story of Van Halen. It will follow the family's journey from immigrants through their rise to rock and roll fame. Van Halen's book is called Brothers and will be available October 22 of this year. Speaking of the brothers Van, despite some prying by Howard Stern, Hart's sisters Anne and Nancy Wilson say nothing ever happened between the two of them and Eddie and Alex Van Halen, other than some general partying. Nancy Wilson says it was like a circus being around the two brothers, describing their dynamic as one minute it was fisticuffs and the next it was hugging and loving, adding that in the 80s it was all imbibery and chicanery. That sounds like a fun era to be a rock star in, much different than the 60s when it was mostly tomfoolery and monkey business. Actress Jessica Chastain says a lot of couples have named their daughters after her character in the Christopher Nolan film Interstellar. Chastain's character was named Murphy Murph Cooper. She played a NASA scientist who traveled through a wormhole with her father, Joseph Cooper, played by Matthew McConaughey, as they tried to save the Earth. Chastain says people come up to her all the time and say they named their daughter Murph. Cute name and much more desirable than all the couples that named their daughters Nurse Ratchet 40 years ago. The Bachelors are turning on each other. Former Bachelor contestant Nick Viles says there might be more to the story regarding the quick divorce between Golden Bachelor couple Jerry Turner and Teresa Nist. File hinted that Jerry Turner might not be as golden as we think. Interesting. Especially coming from a guy who tried to find TV love three times on various Bachelor and Bachelor spinoffs before finally marrying someone he met off-air who was almost 20 years younger. Judge much, Nick? It's another win for A24 as the film Civil War took the top slot in the weekend box office. It was the highest grossing opening weekend ever for the studio. It was also the most lucrative opening for an R-rated film this year. Civil War was the only new theatrical release last weekend. Godzilla x Kong took second place after two weeks at number one. Variety reports that overall the box office is roughly 16% behind the same point in 2023 and 31% down from pre-pandemic days. If you're looking for something new to watch, here's a new Schwabmendation. Check out Leroy, Texas, a quirky caper film where a down-and-out sad sack is mistakenly given money to kill someone. Steve Zahn plays a scene-stealing P.I. The film is a bit dark, but also really funny at times, and overall, a crackling good watch. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba. Weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. A little sunshine this morning with clouds increasing and scattered thunderstorms developing by later this afternoon. It's going to be cooler and windy today with a high of 62. More rain and thunderstorms tonight into tomorrow with an inch or more of rain possible. Could also see a couple of strong to severe thunderstorms later today into tonight as well, so be weather aware. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently it's 51. That's your WMDX Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at mad.radio.